entertaining while it lasted. But the Australian lightweight champion, Otto Ben Raba, comes up with a second round stoppage over the former two-time Australian junior welterweight champion, Stevie Marks, much to the disappointment of my co-commentator, Harry Michael. And as you can see, Stevie Marks thought he had enough petrol in the tank to continue. But Ignatius Misiolidis, our referee, pulls it up. And that brings us to our feature event for the Australian middleweight title. Ian McLeod defends his championship belt against Nick Lund, who won the Victorian title at his most recent outing. A very good one-round stoppage over David Dakey back on the 15th of July. Tail of the tape, Ian McLeod, 179 centimetre reach against 175, has an advantage there. Also has a big advantage in terms of experience. 28 fights to his credit. Nick Lund with just six. But Nick Lund, as he makes his way out, you know he is a very entertaining boxer. He has some, some good scouts on his record with a victory over Steve Duay back in October 2000 at the Seagulls Club with a six-round decision. Duay subsequently went on to win the Australian title. And Nick Lund, though he is inexperienced in term, terms of professional bouts, with just six to his credit, does have a long kickboxing career. 24 and 4 record as a kickboxer. He is the current Australian junior middleweight champion. And started kickboxing as a 15-year-old. Murray Thompson in his corner. And he is set to challenge Ian McLeod for the Australian middleweight crown. 72.57 kilo limit or 11 stone 6 in the old language. And Ian McLeod, well, he certainly has been a tremendous campaigner. Most recently in action back on the 4th of March this year, he won a six-round split decision against Juan Dowling. But prior to that, he took 12 rounds to beat John Wayne Park. In October last year, the Australian middleweight title to capture it for the second time. And Ian McLeod has also won the PABA middleweight title. Took that over Nico Tariri in Jakarta. Way back in August 1997, won his first title, which was the Queensland middleweight crown, the 10-round decision over Danny Bellick at Southport. Very accomplished performer, Ian McLeod. Went nine rounds before being stopped by Anthony Mundine. And what an amateur career he had as well. 150 in and about for this man, Ian McLeod. 110 wins and he arrives for the Australian middleweight championship belt around his waist can Nick Lund take it from him we're about to find out ladies and gentlemen it is main event time here at Fort Knox of those of you in attendance we would ask you to please be upstanding for Advanced Australia Fair to be sung tonight by Alina Zanathadakis This one scheduled for 12 for the Australian middleweight title. 
Introducing first in this interstate contest, fighting out of the blue corner, originally from Sweden, he now calls Blackburn Victoria home. He has trained at the Fighters Factory under the watchful eye of Murray Thompson and weighed in at 72.15 kilograms. Six fights, three wins and a recent knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, your local hope, Nick Lightning Lung. Standing across the ring from far north Queensland, he trains out of Team Fennig in Sydney. In his corner tonight, Angelo Hyder, Billy Hussain, Frankie John Gatt. He weighed in at 71.45 kilograms. 27 fights, 17 wins, four knockouts on his resume. A two-time Australian champion, a PABA champion too. Ladies and gentlemen, the champion, Ian McLeod. The referee for this contest, Mr. Malcolm Bulner, your judges at ringside, Anika Williams, John McCubbin, John Wheeler. Well, welcome to Center Ring, gentlemen. Good luck to both you fighters. Let's have a good clean fight. Come on, fighting your belt. Shake hands now. Good luck. Malcolm Bourneau with the final instructions for Ian McLeod and Nick Lund. The biggest moment in Nick Lund's professional boxing career. Just his seventh fight. And he has climbed to the top of the tree here in Australia to fight for Ian McLeod's middleweight championship belt. 11 stone six in the old language and we are underway. Our feature event from Knox in Melbourne. Trust you have enjoyed our coverage. AMB President Brad Vicali has joined Barry Michael and myself for this final event. And Brad, what are your, is your expectation? John, this is going to be something similar along the lines of the uh, Brad Reed Mark Figuero uh, contest. Ian McLeod is a very experienced man. He's twice now the Australian champion, trains with the strong, powerful Jeff Van Carden stable down in Sydney. And uh, he's, he's ever the professional Ian McLeod. Again, um, Nick Lund is a terrific young man, very good fighter. Surprisingly, was a first round KO winner on the Monday in Ellis undercard over David Dickey. Big right hand put David Dickey out of contention for the state title, and uh, he's certainly a very fit young man, and I think he's very keen to. Uh, he, they, they really believe that they can win this title. Well, and Nick Lund, when he knocked out uh, David Dickey, it was a beautiful right hand, or well, two beautiful right hands he did it with, and he tried to hear a couple of times already with Ian McLeod, and he hasn't landed that. Uh, I, I know. Uh, guys that trained with him and Julian Holland actually told me that in the gym Nick Lund punches the pads harder than anybody but I still think he's got a very big job in front of him here against Ian McLeod very experienced been in with some of the very best in the world and uh, you know a real good fighter and I think it's just going to be too much for Nick Lund at this stage of his career. You certainly take nothing away from Nick Lund Barry you as you know no, it's, uh, right. he's, a, he's a very fit young man he's, he's purposeful he's, uh, he's watchful he's carefully he hit uh, Ian McLeod with a very nice little left hook there and he's come to fight. I mean, well, uh, going on what um, Julian's told me, and also Brian Butler, one of my old sparring partners, ex uh, amateur champion who trains with um, the boys over here at Murray Thompson's gym, says that Nick Lund has really got the power. If he can get onto anybody, he can hurt. Him. Well, he does hold a win over uh, the, former, uh, the former Australian junior middleweight champion, Steve Buwe. As we watch the power and the experience of uh, Ian McLeod just taking its toll on Nick Lund in this first round. The crowd doing this round quite easily. He hasn't taken a clean shot yet, I don't think. I think uh, Nick Lund needs, me, needs to just do a little more than what he's doing here. He's trying to load up with that big right hand. It takes more than a big uh, power in one hand to be able to beat the likes of uh, uh, Ian McLeod. Surprisingly, Ian McLeod, since he joined the Phoenix stable, it's a powerful stable down there in Sydney. He has his Murray Thompson gym over here in Blackburn, a very powerful stable. He's only lost two fights. One was to Armin Dajadato over in, uh, in the oppressive heat in Indonesia for the PABA junior middleweight title. He struggled to make the weight in that fight. And the other one was Monday. And of course, Monday, which is certainly no disgrace to lose to uh, Monday. Good hands, Nick Lund. He's certainly... Uh, is a good, good, nice little jab. He won't have to go and find Ian McLeod. Ian McLeod will be straight in front of him. 
ended the opening round and Angelo Hyde in the corner for the, with the instructions for Ian McLeod as well. Already they've ushered Mark Ruggiero safely home, retaining his Australian title against Brad Reid. You're a little bit straight in front of him and he's trying to throw a right hand because he's a bit confident because he knocked the bloke out with it okay we're going to move this way mm -hmm. just keep the feet moving don't let them be flat like him you're a bit better class than that we've got to work those angles you keep them feet moving on that back leg around left up the middle right hand here where you're hitting now as you're doing it as you're moving balk him a bit move the foot and the hand Throw the left into the eye. Let's go. Animated explanation from Angelo Hyder. As we get underway, round number two. Australian middleweight crown up for grabs. Ian McLeod defending his title. And he's back to us. Good enough to take the opening round. On Barry Michaels' card, I saw it likewise. 10-9 for Ian McLeod against Nick Lund. Big step up in class here for Nick Lund. Big opportunity for Nick Lund. Uh, tough job, though. He looks just a little bit too straight and upright for me, Barry. Uh, Nick, he's... Um, Mate, that's the way he is. I've, I've yeah. seen him, remember seeing him fight as a kickboxer when he fought Paul Major many years ago on the dish, and I've always thought he was, you know, a little bit upright. He had a good kickboxing career himself. But uh, maybe just, you know, like, as uh, Angelo Hyder said, from an angle, you know, don't stand still. But as we know, Nick Lund has got that power to turn the fight around with one vicious right hand. He's got good hands and he's just not using them. He's allowing Ian McLeod just to take the fight away from him. And uh, I think Nick's just trying to think that he can get away with it with the big bomb. But it's not going to happen against the likes of Ian McLeod. McLeod, watchful, purposeful. Look at his face. He's, uh, he's all business, Ian McLeod. He sure is. But, you know, you, you never know, Brad. Oh, no. One shot can certainly. I mean, you know, we saw it in the last in the last title fight earlier this evening. Well, what about when, when, when uh, Nick Lund fought David Dagg? I mean, that was just a classic KO. So quick with that beautiful. Now it's so two right hands straight down the barrel. Spot on. And, of course, in the dangerous first round when the fighter is ever going to be caught and caught cold in the first round. round. When your nervous system's cold, but undoubtedly. I've explained that a few times to our viewers. Quite often you can be caught with a shot in the first round and either, either hurt badly or even dropped, and the same shot three or four rounds later won't do anything. The crowd unloads with a big right hand on Nick Lund. I, I do know that in my career, you know, I always have a tendency to be hurt in the first couple of rounds. So there's that right hand from Nick Once I get over that, I'll be fine. And that's, uh, especially when the fighters get a bit old. And Barry, no fighter is exempt from it. It doesn't matter what level you are, whether you're a Mike Tyson or an Oscar De La Hoya or a Costas, or, I mean, or you have a fighter having your first fight. It's, it's vitally important that you warm up and do your work in the room before you come oh, out to the gym. You know you've done the work in the gymnasium. This is the easiest part of the sport. This is the fight. That's the easiest part. The hard part is the preparation, All the training, training stuff. Yeah, that's, you getting know, up in the morning. That. Who would have realised what the fighters have to go through to get to where they get? Only for that good self and that preparation, then they have to get up there and not get right. Once you're there and the fight's not going to I shouldn't say it's the easy part of it, but uh, you're sort of glad. The worst part about it is all the waiting and preparation, making the weight a particular. We were only talking about that, I was talking about that with Ian McLeod this afternoon, and uh, he was just sort of saying, I just can't wait to get this over, and the hardest part is a 24 hour waiting. Yeah, it's a good round for Ian McLeod. Yep, just too smart at the moment, Ian McLeod. Uh, Nick Lund did crash a right hand through, which was uh, largely ineffective, but uh, did have a lot of power there. Ending with the right hand, over for the right hand. You got the right, you got the eyes flying now. Yep. No, way to the Some of the action from round number two. Not a lot apart from that one right hand coming from Nick Lund. He was very watchful. And already we're seeing some parallels in this fight to the other Australian title fight where the champion with a big edge in experience was able to dictate. And that was Mark Bajero. On this occasion, it's Ian McLeod. He's got an opponent that he's confident that he can handle. And there was the right hand from Nick Lund. Landed high on the cheekbone. The it was a very nice little short left hook that Ian McLeod hit Nick Lund with as well. Round number 
number three. Ian McLeod leapt out of the red corner. He's ready to go. He's won the first two rounds, according to Barry Michael. I see it likewise, 2018. And Nick Lund really needs to lift the tempo here or try and change the pattern of the fight at least. His early stages, we've only seen two rounds. From the evidence that we saw with the Bajero Reed fight, this is blooming as a similar scenario. It's a very nice left hand of uh, Ian McLeod. He's kept it in the face of Nick Lund. Nick needs to increase his work rate if he's going to take the title off the champion. He's a very good champion too, Ian McLeod. Honestly, I, I really believe Nick Lund only hope is that right hand of his. I'm sure that's the point he's taking. He has got a hell of a lot of power at the right hand of his rear. Yet for Ian McLeod has lost two of his last four fights by stoppage. Yep, the right hand from Anthony Mundine actually put him down a couple of occasions, I think, on memory. No one Agitado stopped him in six in July last year. Ian had a very close call up on the Gold Coast of Jupiter's Casino on a show that was promoted by uh, Kieran O'Connor. He fought Juan Dowling, one of the future stars of Australian boxing up there and uh, Ian got home with the uh, decision but it was a very very close fight even Jeff Fennick said to me after the fight he thought he was very very lucky uh, but he's a very very good workman very good tradesman Ian McLeod take nothing away from him lives up in Tully in far north Queensland works on his dad's farm he goes down to Sydney to prepare for his fights and works as a school teacher as a casual school teacher down in Sydney it's a Mission Beach, what a beautiful place it is too, Mission Beach in Farm North Queensland. Beautiful. God's country up there, it certainly is. Very professional McLeod, comes from a professional stable, We've got a very professional team in the corner. Billy Hussain, Frankie, John Gatman and uh, Angelo Hyder. There's a damaging right hand by uh, Nick Lund. I'd just like to see, to see Nick doing a little bit more work and let the power take care of itself. But if he ups his ante a little bit, ups the work rate a little bit, but the power will automatically come to the fore rather than just sit on that big right hand and the way that he's doing because Ian's just pinching the points off him at the moment. He is, Brad. He's, but he's, you know, he's probably confusing him. He's, he's tying him up. He's feigning. He's you know, slipping and sliding in the cloud and, and countering well. But I'll tell you what, he is aware of the power in that right hand. Just at that vital moment there, he's poking out the jab out. There's no purposefulness, no purposefulness in that left hand of, uh, of Nick London. I think if he can get a little bit more confidence, poke that jab out to the end of the last fight, he's face just like he was doing for him. And the fight of this fight could turn very easily. Well, Nick London heads back to the blue corner at the end of three rounds. He's behind on points. Ian McLeod at the moment has this under control. Let's listen to Billy Hussain. Because he's waiting to set you up for the right hand. Because we're leaning back, we're dropping our left hand. All right, Ian? We're right there for the right hand. I want you to force him back now. He can't get set when he's going backwards. But as long as you're going to stay in front of him, he's going to get set to throw the right hand. All right? Me with forward. What? Give me a towel. Ian, I want you to go forward now. Jab and get busier now. Forget the way in game now. We've done it for three rounds. He hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. All right, that right hand's going to hit us with it if we're waiting for him in one line. Okay. This is some of the better action from round number three. Nick Lund's dangerous right hand finding a home there. But each time he lands the right hand, Ian McLeod wants to up the ante and get straight back after his opponent. It's a sign of a very good corner, Barry. Is the when you see that they understand that they're conscious of that dangerous big right hand. Oh. They know that that man on our left has got power. Billy, Billy wants him to push uh, Nick Lund back so that it takes the power away from the right hand. Probably so he can't, it, so. can't set himself for it. Oh, yeah, I'm waiting with the right hand. Five right, right hands. Beautiful hands. And that's a quality opposition that perhaps Nick Lund hasn't seen in the past with just six fights under his belt. Big step up in class here. And he's a player with an edge of experience as well. He's certainly throwing more leather in the clinches. He's a busy fighter in the cloud, immaculately prepared, always very fit. A very funny man outside the ring too. 
better jab from uh, Nick Murray. We saw a lovely jab from there in the crowd. Tonight's been a case of, of the up and coming young fighters challenging the champions trying to take their titles from them. Nick Lund came into this fight, rank number seven for the middleweight title held by Ian McLeod. We've got Sam Solomon sitting behind us here at ringside. He's ranked number two, Brad. Told us he'd take his civvies off and fight Ian McLeod tonight despite an injured right hand. Is he in the frame? Will he challenge? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, Ian, this is a voluntary defence. The uh, ANBF ratings committee have, have deemed this is a voluntary defence for uh, Ian McLeod. He is due for a mandatory defence, and Sam Solomon would certainly be right up there. Uh, the number one contender, of course, is Nader Hamden, a gym mate of uh, Ian McLeod, so that nullifies that, but Sam Solomon would be the mandatory defence. I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret that uh, there's a possibility the RTBF uh, super, uh, middleweight champion uh, Ozumi in Japan has vacated the title, I believe, or is about ready to vacate the title. The player has been pushing for a fight with Ozumi, and uh, there is moves to put to try and put it in the cloud and Sam Solomon together yeah. back for the yeah. ATBF title, which would be a terrific fight. Yep, yeah. well, mate, Sam Solomon is credit for the game, and he's uh, very, very hard man to Awful. We thought Mark Figueroa was a little bit awful later on, and we've seen Sam Solomon here is even more awful. Slips and slides beautifully. Yeah, gave Anthony Moon, Amundine, probably one of his hardest fights. Probably, I would dare say, even maybe harder than Sven Otke. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, as far as points are concerned, uh, it was a very touch and go affair. It's a credit to the sport, Sam Solomon. He's fought in lots of other countries in the world, fought in Germany, Holland, Denmark. And fights at the London. top of the hat. He, he, uh, Sam and I were talking about it before. He's like the old time fighters. You, you go where the money is and you go to the actual people. You try to fight here and they keep it And he's ever the professional. We're trained sure with, uh, with Dave Hedgecock at the Underworld Gym. Dave, I know you're probably watching tonight. An old school mate of mine from Preston Tech. Is that my friend? Oh. school. End of round number four. Uh, a good round for Ian McLeod. But I tell you, I, I thought um, Nick Lund boxed a bit better that round. He did, did land with a couple of authority with a couple of jabs. And, uh, We're know. starting to settle down a little bit, Barry, and I think uh, if we can have a listen to Murray Thompson and see what he's got in charge for his young men. He's no stronger than you. Yeah. Um, we'll push him back a little bit. Get a bit closer to him. Get a bit closer to him. You're throwing the right hand from too far out. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Two's and three's, huh? Two's and three's and three's. You're going to right. Going still early. Yeah. We've got to pick it up though now. We've got to pick it up from here. Yeah, sorry. Well, Nick Lund, with four rounds under his belt, the right hand's the weapon that he's trying to unleash on Ian McLeod. But as I mentioned, each time he comes forward with the right hand, McLeod's equal to it and then wants to up the ante as well. Seconds down. Spare back. Spare back in the fight. Ah. Round number five for the Australian middleweight title gets underway. Ian McLeod, the defending champion, leads handsomely on our cards at the moment. 40-36 has not lost a round. But Nick Lund carries big power with the right hand. That's what he'll be looking to try and change the pattern of the fight with. I think that's what they're banking everything. They're listening to the corner too. You know, they're talking about trying to lure him on the right hand. That's a big chance. I just see Barry, and as you will know, you fought some of the finest fighters in the world in your career, and it takes just a little more than a big right hand. Ian McLeod is actually hitting um, Nick Lund probably five or six times to once, as demonstrated by those two beautiful left jabs. And he's keeping Nick Lund on the back foot, he's keeping himself off, off balance so that he can't see himself. And then Nick, Nick throws that left lead, and it's, a, it's not purposeful. He's not the left's got nothing in it. He just, all he's looking for is that right. That's all he's looking for. But, uh, and Ian McLeod, you know, very, very, in his corner, very aware that that's what, that's what they're looking for. And he's, at this stage, he's, uh, he's you know, refused to be tagged cleanly by doing a very good job of our boxing at the moment. And he's just fighting at an even pace here. Okay? He's staying at the one pace. He's not going up and down and all around it. He's staying at that one pace, just doing what he has to do, playing a counter-punching role. And also, as he counter-punches, but he certainly keeps Nick Lund off balance with that big lead. Oh, it's a great opportunity too, Barry, for these two young boys. We saw Brad Reed a little bit earlier, number seven in Australia. Nick, Nick Lund, number seven, is a good opportunity when you get rated in the top ten in Australia. The opportunity for an Australian title, you've got to take it for sure. It's 
something that we've worked with our ratings committee over the, over the journey where we've had Australian champions win regional titles and have been defending Australian titles. So we changed that rule a few years back where if you win a regional title, you must vacate your Australian title. It gives, yeah, it gives you know, the clouds yeah. and the big lungs and the Brad Reeds. Yeah, they're, they're up and coming in and the What you're talking about is all about you know, taking the opportunity when it's offered to you, even if you're lower in the rankings or maybe, you know, inexperienced or whatever. It just, it just takes me back to a, a good mate of ours we saw here just before we inside Henry Nissen, who was the undefeated Commonwealth champion after about a dozen fights, I think, and was offered a shot at the world title and didn't take him, the trainer didn't take him the time because they thought he was too inexperienced. Yes. And I really believe Henry regrets that what to this day. What a shame, wasn't it? Because a, a real 15 round fighter, Henry Nissen, and a great, a great man outside of the ring as well. What he does for the youth of this country, that's another story. Persevering here, trying to find a home for the right hand, and Ian McLeod just picking him off at will. On a 10 9 round for Ian McLeod, and the book's coming up here at the end of round number five. Two cages in the moment, Ian McLeod. It's been a professional display so far, and we expected nothing less from Ian McLeod. Which comes ready to go. My Nick London, his seventh fight, prepares for his Australian title. We saw Ian McLeod in his eighth fight, fight for the Australian title, losing to Mark Ruggiero. They had a couple of very good battles, Mark Ruggiero and uh, Ian McLeod. On this way, motion there, the beautiful, beautiful boxing from Ian McLeod. There. Lovely clean left hands to the face. Look at that. And that's the difference, Barry, and that's why he is the Australian middleweight champion. Some weight beyond your arm. Listen, it's like this, brother. It's a squeeze ball. Bang! 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 He's certainly animated Angelo Hyder, isn't he, John? Well, Angelo Hyder and Billy Hussain tag team in the corner with the instructions for Ian McLeod as round number six gets underway. His Australian title is safe at the moment, according to Barry Michael. We both have 50 45 and that's one every round. And Nick Lund trying to land the right hand that might change the course of the fight. He's desperate there. Well, Ian McLeod just walked onto a right hand that was very first. Oh, there it is again. Looks like he's going to uh, increase the pressure on Ian McLeod. So that Murray Thompson wouldn't be too happy. It would be a good reward for Murray Thompson. He's, a, he's an excellent young man. He's a terrific promoter. He cares very, very much for his fighters. He does. He really does. He does a great job. This really is a little bit of a test case. He really wants to see where Nick Lund is in the Australian boxing scene and uh, certainly it'll be no disgrace for him to lose to uh, a fight of the calibre of Ian McLeod who has fought overseas a number of times, he's very experienced, gets good sparring from up in the Bennett camp with Nader Hamden and Danny Green. Well that's, you know, it's so important to get that quality sparring from you know, like in our day we always have so many good fighters who spar and these days it's a lot harder for young up and coming to get to good sparring. You've got to spar to improve, you've got to spar a really good fighter, more better fighter. That's why he's not told Anthony Mundine he needs to be sparring while he's fighting. Yeah, so that's where all the work's done, and then you can transfer that work from the gymnasium into the boxing room. That's what makes it happen. Another With good work here in round number six. Seems a little bit of a, a little bit of an arm wrestle. Well, uh, Nick Lund has certainly uh, increased the pressure on him, but he's not winning the round. But McLeod sort of standing there in front of him. Uh, Lund with a cut along the right line, which is going to create some problems. Nick Lund certainly having a go, you know, fighting, fighting desperately here, trying to land the big ones on an evasive Ian McLeod. He's again young man, Nick Lund. And to his credit, he's put his foot on the accelerator here in round number six. The first five didn't go according to plan. So he has tried to at least change the tempo. Let's see if that might come to his advantage. As you can see, the blood working its way down from that cut in the right eye. I wouldn't be surprised if that cut came from a nice left hook from Ian McLeod. I'll wait to see what referee Malcolm Bourne says. One of those lovely straight back. Yes, 
Completed. And we have Ian McLeod winning every one of them. Here's Murray Thompson with a battered and bruised Nick Lund. Pull your finger out, Nick. Yeah. What's wrong with his body thing? Not a bad cut right on the outside of the of the eye. Should should not be a problem for an experienced corner. Don't let him hit it again, okay? Don't let him hit it again. Rough him up. Come on, Nick. It's all about. It's easier said than done, Dr. Jury. <laughs> no, he's a good man, Dr. John yep. Jury, and I'm he's sure he's uh, having a bit of a joke there. He knows that Lund down will get punched Come again. On. You're just as strong as this bloke. Yep. Push him back. Yep. The blood stopped yeah. easily by a very, I don't want very good corner work. Push him back. Push him back. Referee yeah. Malcolm Bulmer has decided it was a head clash that caused the cut to Nick Lund's eye. So we will go to the scorecard if required. And Barry Michael at the moment has Ian McLeod pitching a shutout. All six rounds. I see it likewise. It's been a polished display from Ian McLeod. Oh, yeah. Now that was a big right hand. That really snapped the foul's head back, but he seemed to have taken it well. You can see when Nick, when Nick Lund jabbed at Ian McLeod, hit him straight on the nose. And that's what he's got to do. He's can't just throw the right hand willy willy, he needs to come in behind that left hand and might have a little bit more success with it. And then McLeod with a big right hand of his own. Using his experience here, Ian McLeod. Nick Lund, buoyed by landing the big right hand for the first time, wants to go on with the job. Short right as Nick comes rushing in and he's almost corrected Nick with that a couple of times. It's a dangerous little punch. He's fought some of this country's best fighters, Nick. Um, sorry, Ian McLeod. He's fought Julian Holland. He holds the winner, Julian Holland. Yeah, Italy at junior middleweight. Yeah, he's first lost to Julian's career, I believe. Yeah. Beats Henry. Mark Figueroa twice. Anthony Mundine. Nico Tereri. Brandon Wood. Aramis Happy Eye. He's fought them all. He's a very experienced fighter. Well, I think when Anthony Mundine fought Ian, I think he was about number 12 in the WEC ranking. Barry, as you know, that's a really hard punch to, uh, to do just off the cup like that. It's a really good straight off the cup without a lead. You've got to be very risky. Risky punch. Very risky, bro. Very, it is, it's a low percentage punch, and only the great Lionel Rose I saw do that many, many times with confidence. Except he'd hit him with three or four of them. Exactly. exactly. And talking of Lionel Rose, his young guy Michael was here tonight. Michael's about ready to make his pro debut shortly. He looks very, very fit. I had a bit of a chat to him a little bit earlier on. Good mate of mine, young Michael, and he's uh, going to be be great to see him have a fight. The great Lionel Rose, one of the, well, for my money, early doors until Cop the Duke came on the scene. Seeing him as the best fighter I'd thought we could use, and I to get that over there. I had the, uh, the pleasure of sparring heaps with Lionel when I was about 19, and he was a wizard. Absolute wizard. Certainly was. Won the title on February 27, 1968, from the famous fighting variety. I've had the pleasure of meeting a couple of times in Japan on my travels there. What an effort. I mean, look at the fighting variety. I think he lost about three professional fights. One was to Johnny Gunshot, one was to Eda Joker, and uh, one to Lion Road. And a huge amount of victories and a great, great fighter. Another round to uh, Ian McLeod there, but uh, Nick Lund really trying his hard here. Of the round, the first minute you listen to everything, and everything landed. Everything, every left, right, every jab landed. Breathe deep, slow it down. In the middle of the fight, you went to sleep on us, mate. You've got to put two punches together, mate. One's not good enough, it's not working for you. He's just there in front of you. Do you want to work, brother, or you want to make it close? You don't want to get stolen here, do you? Well, the complexion has changed in the red corner. 
obviously Ian McLeod still well on top but that right hand from Nick Lund grabbed the attention of McLeod and grabbed the attention of McLeod's corner as well. well we saw there Frankie John Gatt in the corner mentioning that one punch was not enough he needs to throw punches in bunches combinations and that's what he has to do as so does that man there Nick Lund <laughs> Oh, Nick Lund is in this with a puncher's chance, I can assure you. That right hand is a ripper. He's still in it with a puncher's chance. Oh, there it is! Oh, look at that. There it is! As you see. It. Wow! He was very Michael. He was bubbled there. Oh, he hurt the oh, hand. He doesn't want to take. The crowd doesn't want to take too many more shots. He doesn't want to take him He's got a fight smart here in the cloud. He gets mad at playing all that again. Nick Lund can turn this around. And he's a call over the left eye. That was for that one.
stalking her in the clouds now. Look like they've done a good job on the, on the left eye of Ian McLeod. He's still flat footed, still unsteady. As Dick just becomes a little desperate, spraying his punches all over the place. Certainly desperate because he knows that he's had Ian McLeod in a lot of trouble and he's hoping to put him back in Dick McLeod again. Quickly, every time he misses, just take that a little bit more out of him. Oh, just head hunting a little bit now, Nick Lund. He needs to just increase his work rate, bunches and punches in bunches, and it'll just the right hand will just come. Brad, but that's that's pretty game plan right the way through, yeah, mate. Yeah, just I, looking for the right hand, and I can see sooner or later he... There it is! Well, there it is, for him. Well, how can you still be standing right on the end of that right hand? Look, he's gonna go. He can't take too many more like this without going down in the cloud. Fitness must be unbelievable. He's got a heart like far like the cloud, but you cannot afford to get hit with just like that. experience is going to see him through a minute and nine seconds to go. Mate, a couple more like that, God. He's going to keep, I tell you what, as the fight progresses, as Ian starts to slow up, I've always thought there was that opening to the right hand. He looked like he could be hit with it. Now he's getting hit with it, and he's going to keep, keep getting hit with it. Damn. Don't worry. Nick Lund, I think now he's going to, going to stop Ian McLeod. Uh, at some stage in this fight, I think this fight's going to be stopped in Nick Lund's face. That's my prediction. I think Nick's not doing enough. He needs to increase the pressure on half of Ian McLeod. But uh, Ian's experience is getting him through with 36 seconds to go. Brad, all he needs to do is just to continue waiting and landing the right hand. That's all he's done all the way through the fight. And at last, it's finally starting to come good for him. He only needs a couple more like that. I just think that if uh, Ian McLeod can weather this storm, get over this perfect, this uh, first round, the last two rounds, he's Get hit with it again. Come on, Just not putting the pressure on the crowd enough. He's uh, Nick Lund, but, uh, all credit to him. When he looked down and out, he came out of it. Place. You thought it correctly, though. And that's a terrific round for Nick Lund. Another round for Nick Lund. The last two I've given Nick Lund. Incredible turnaround. But as I've said right from the start, he's just thanked for the final and finally he's got through. Johnny, you want it? Let's do it. He wants it. Come on, Nick, let's be busier. Come on. You can't see the right hand. He's come here for a picnic. Come on. He comes down from Sydney to beat you. He thinks this is going to be easy. It's not easy. Push him back. Come on. Come on, Nick. That's what it's all about. A big opportunity here for Nick Lund after being on the receiving end for seven rounds. He turned it around in round eight, went on with the job in round nine, landing the right hand at will. And now the question is, can Ian McLeod survive the last three rounds? I'll tell you what, to Ian McLeod, the fight is just took a second. Second. It's just the power of the fight changed. Ian McLeod, I think we're going to see him. I think McLeod's but experience, Barry, will see him through here. If he doesn't stand in front of Nick Lund like he has been for those last two rounds, if he can get on his bike and box, he just might come through. But Nick Lund, the power there is absolutely incredible. He's full of confidence. Got heaps of confidence. As, Barry, as, as um, Murray Thompson said, he needs to increase his work rate. He's got to do just more than one punch. He needs the punches in bunches, and the power will take care of itself. Just right the way from the first bell, all he's looking for is the right hand. Been a, it's been effective at last. It took him a while. Looks a little more composed, Ian McLeod. Now, ever so watchful, ever so careful, he knows that he can be hurt. Yeah, he needs to certainly stay away from the right hand. A lesser yeah. man would not have been still standing there, Barry, after pumping those three marvellous right hands. Not many men would still be there. I tell you, they were bombs. No one tonight has been hit that hard. He is a powerful puncher, Nick Lund. Just goes to show you the power that Anthony Mundine must have because he had Ian McLeod down three times on the end of right hand. Yeah, that's a good point. And Ian is very, 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 very fit. Very tough, very tough young man. Having dominated the first seven rounds of the fight, McLeod would have helped his points advantage. Yeah, Lund's at this stage, but he's still got a point knock it out the ring. He, he needs to just get, get back and concentrate on, on doing his work rate. He just loads up with that big right hand and McLeod could see that one coming. 
Burns still a little unsteady on his feet. He hasn't got that spring in his foot. He's flat footed. Absolute genius how you read that. It was there all night. Murray's been saying push him back, push him back, give yourself some room, throw that right hand. You can just see a bit of fatigue coming in. I can see the right was getting close up. Never say the guy is the What a terrific fight, worthy of Australian title status. It's ended up a record. You have to start on that more or less one way track and barely go there. But uh, Nick Wand is certainly back in his fight in a big way. With a record of three fights, three wins near Lane, you wouldn't give me much chance against me in the cloud with a record of 17 wins and nine losses. But as I said, Brad, you know, I, I knew the power was there, what the boys told me and what I saw. David Dakey, and there it is again. Twenty seconds remaining in the tenth round. Crowd now bleeding from the nose as well as the ball for left line. He's a tough customer. He comes back with his own right hand. Big McLeod to that pinch in his round though. Oh, good work there. Good finish from Nick Martin. That's really nice It's a very close round. I've actually given a round to Nick Martin. Right. Well, those last couple of shots up until the last remaining seconds there, I thought McLeod might have just about pinched it, but he, he got hit with a couple of clean ones right at the end of the round. This is very important, Billy. Blow him out. Mate, look you. at me, brother. Look at Billy. Six minutes, I want you to go to work. We can't fight him from the outside again. He's hitting us with that right hand all the time. Brother, let's put him back. He can't fight going backwards. He wants to wait for his right hand. That's what he's waiting for, the one right hand. Go on the outside, Luke. Here's some of the action from round number 10. Nick Lund has been dishing it out for the last three rounds after McLeod dominated the first seven. And there are two remaining. And will it be the right hand of Nick Lund or will the perseverance, the experience, and the never say die at its second see him across the line? Round oh, well, we're in the championship rounds now. The uncharted territory for Nick Lund. Oh, he's got him this time. That's a big one. This fight's had it all, John. An absolute war between Ian McLeod and Nick Lund. The one they'll be talking about for a long time. Nick Lund looking for the right hand again. Only courage keeping McLeod on his feet at the moment. I'll tell you what, he should have gone down for some of those shots. Oh, They've been bombed. Ian McLeod has dug so deep. This young man. He doesn't need to stand here just in front of uh, Nick Lund. He needs to work some angles. Keep Nick Lund on the back foot. Use that left hand, that left knee to grab him. The player has gone missing up until now. Yeah, but I think you know, he's worried that putting his left lead out, he's going to get nailed with a right hand over the top. Yes. As he goes over the top with his own right hand. That right hand, out the 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 right hand to get away from it. He looked up, he got up there. Oh, oh, right oh, 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 yeah, you'll be disorientated after that. He's right hand oh, oh, the right hand. He's moving 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 the but still he's in uncharted territory, he's digging deep, both boys digging deep. It's absolute testament to the training ability of Murray Thompson down at the Fighters Factory in Blackburn. He's prepared Nick Lund immaculately for this fight. And Nick, so Lund, and Nick Lund has never been beyond six rounds in his life. And he's doing, doing great in this round too. He's Oh, 
comeback. Incredible. He did the last three rounds and he did the last four. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, the top of Ian McLeod. He's not done with, yet with Ian McLeod. His experience is getting him through. He did a right back. I think it's good advice. Keep him on the back foot. He can't bomb that right oh, head. Yeah. There he is. Every time he throws that left leg, in in inexperience is taking a little bit of a toll here on the game. What a good effort. I actually gave that round to Ian McLeod. I thought he, he came back at the end of the round. He's fairly even. Yeah, you got to be real busy. But he's well behind on points. They're going to lose here. Right? You got to hey. You, everything yeah, on the line now. Yeah. Everything on the line now. Yeah. You have to knock him out. Okay. I want you busy, busy, yeah. you're live. Now yeah. just punch, 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 right hand over the top, finish with a hook. Okay. Come on and okay. work that round. Well, Nick Lund throwing everything at Ian McLeod. Started back in round eight and for four consecutive rounds, Nick Lund has landed some enormous shots on Ian McLeod, and not only is he still there, he hasn't been down yet. Seconds down, ladies and gentlemen. Three minutes what remaining. A fight for what a finish to proceed in sir, from Port Knox in the home of Australian boxing. We trust you are enjoying our coverage. Honestly, three rounds ago, I wouldn't have thought Ian McLeod was going to be here. He's a credit to the fight game. He's a credit to himself. He's got a hard well, hang back. Get up for it. Man, oh, he takes like a good job. Gary Michael has 107, 102. I have 107, 103. Both in favour of Ian McLeod. He stays on his feet. He should get a French decision. And Nick Lund shown us enough to suggest that he can still win. He's as Barry said earlier on, he's in with a puncher's chance. He's right up until that last go goes. I think the other thing that's also was in Nick Lund's disadvantage was that his inactivity he hasn't had a lot of fights, six fights in, uh, since 1999. But a good effort. He can be well proud of himself, Nick Lund. Oh, both men deserve the vibes for this. It'll be a pleasure to strike the championship belt around one of the... At this stage, it's looking like it'll be the champion here in the cloud, but you never know what might happen. Seconds remaining. Nick Lund could have trouble getting opponents after this. Going up to scare Tim then, but Ian McLeod, face covered in blood, still standing in front of him, saying, If you want my Australian title, you better come get it. Less than 60 seconds remaining. A 12 round war between Ian McLeod and Nick Lund. One of the fights of the year. Seconds this fight slipping away from him. He's done the majority of the work he's done, though. Nick Lund goes, you know, McLeod being careful. Beautiful over the top right hand by Ian McLeod. Oh, there it is. There's the right hand again. And Nick Lund, the bomb of the right hand. He's still looking for it. 12 seconds remaining. Time's running out for Nick Lund. Ian McLeod and Nick Lund couldn't decide this one, so our judges are going to be required, and John McCutt and John Wheeler and Annika Williams will have to decide the Australian middleweight championship. Ian McLeod and Nick Lund both getting a healthy round of applause from the fans. They're on their feet, Eric Knox, and why not? One of the best main events we have seen.
puts it on top. Nick Lundy up and coming cross kick in just his seventh professional fight on the receiving end for the first seven rounds. Then unhinged the cloud with a right hand in round eight. And I had him winning four of the last five rounds and sharing one to give McLeod a three-point buffer. But what a performance. And Ian McLeod's ability to maintain himself is just incredible. Championship boxing is all about. I think Brad Bacali and Harry Michael himself are unanimous here with a victory on points for Ian McLeod. 116-112 for Barry. 116-112 for me too. Now had 116-113. Clearly dominated the first seven rounds, Ian McLeod. He did, definitely. Nick Lund. Came on strong in round number eight. Again had McLeod hurt in the ninth round. McLeod then bleeding from the nose in the tenth round. Round 11, I thought it was even Stephen. In the last round, Nick Lund just unloading right hands against the immovable object. Here McLeod has put up one of the more extraordinary tough performances we have seen. No surprise that the judges taking some time to put the numbers together Nick Lund what a performance Ian McLeod what a performance let's find out who's going home with the Australian middleweight title ladies and gentlemen before we do go to the judges scorecards what about putting your hands together around Australia one more time quite simply it does not get any better the Australian middleweight title on the line. We have a split decision. Judge Anika Williams scores the bout 115-113 Lund. Judge John Wheeler scores the bout 115-114 McLeod. Judge John McCubbin scores the bout 115-113 for your winner. Ian McLeod! Getting the decision by two points from John McCubbin, one point from John Wheeler, and Annika Williams had Nick Lund winning by two points. Very much was shaking his head. Nick Lund for a great fight, but he, he lost on points. He did lose on points. Brad Bacali with the honours of strapping the belt around the waist of Ian McLeod. And Sam Solomon giving Nick Lund a pat on the back. He wants Ian McLeod next and says, Nick Lund, despite being on the losing end here, has covered himself in glory. He did enough to convince one judge that he won the fight, but the other two leaning towards Ian McLeod, and he's standing by. What a performance. And what on earth does it take to put you to the canvas, Macca? Well... Yesterday went away and he thanked me for his chance and he, he took his chance. For a guy that's had six fights, to show the composure and the intestinal fortitude that he did, he hadn't been 12 rounds, it was a great performance. 12 going rounds, it's a dorking task when you haven't had 12 before and he did very well, so I think he deserves another go, don't you? You mentioned that when you walk past each other at the end of the fight. Are you going to dance again? Why not? You got my support, buddy. Yeah, well. Get it on. Yeah, love it, Ian McLeod. Congratulations. Good stuff. Just hand-picked opponents, and, um, and it just goes to show he backfired on him, and he lost the fight, and everyone knows that. And um, put him in a ring with me, and you know what would happen. That's why, that's why Fennec will avoid me all night. He'd fight me tomorrow. He'd fight me tomorrow, but Fennec would just give him the advice and tell him exactly what would really happen in the fight. And I'm sure Ian knows that. Macca, Sam Solomon issuing a challenge. Who was that? Not even a challenge here, mate. <laughs> Not even a challenge here. Too easy. Too easy, that's it. Well, I've got a rematch to have first, and then we can talk. 
Sam? Like I said, he's calling for the rematch first. I mean, I'm sure Fennec must have just rang him then somewhere along the line. We must have missed it and told him, mate, don't take this kid on. How about Sakio Becker? You fight him or you're dodging him, eh? Well, we, we put Sakio Becker to Sam, but say, hang on, now you didn't want Sakio Becker. So why don't you fight Becker and then McLeod if you're issuing challenges, Sam? Sakio Becker and you, October 25, Star City Casino. Will you take the fight, Sam? You're throwing challenges out, son. Say yes and back it up. Come on, put the IBF title on the line. I don't know, I don't know what's bigger, my right hand or his mouth. There we go. It's all on, centre ring, challenges everywhere. Who fights who next? Well, toss it up. Well, Nick Lund put on a brave display. Let's get a word He's from him as well. Everyone's yelling in, screaming, except you, Nick, but you don't walk out of here with a belt, but there's boxing fans around Australia that look at you in a completely different light. Congratulations, one hell of a performance. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I've really got to thank Murray. Yeah, I thank Ian McLeod too for giving me the opportunity. Next time I'll take it, of course. You know, Murray, my trainer, mentor, you know, he's everything to me. You know, I thank my wife, Michelle, my two kids, I'll be at home watching this. You know, and all my fans, I thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. He can take a punch, can't he? You did get him repeatedly. Yeah, it's true. He definitely can take a punch. A lot of other people have gone down from there. One guy we look forward to seeing plenty more of on Big Time Boxing, Nick London. Kids, that's OK. Well, Nick Lund, what a performance. Didn't get the belt, but he unloaded some enormous shots here on Ian McLeod from round eight onwards. It was Nick Lund coming on strong after McLeod had dominated the first seven rounds of the fight. And what a tremendous scrap this turned out to be for our feature event for the Australian middleweight title. Another enormous right hand. And Barry Michael just shaking his head at McLeod's ability to take these shots and not go down. Mate, they were, they were, a lot of those shots were flush on the chin. Ian McLeod, a very you know, well-conditioned bloke with a great chin. A very good fight. A very good fight. Well, split wow. points decision going in the direction of Ian McLeod. But Nick Lund can hold his head high as well. And that to bring the curtain down on a fantastic night of action from Knox. If you joined us a little late, I'll take you through the results. And we saw Sergio Lancafillo come up with a sixth round stoppage of Aaron Kelly. Kelly ahead on points at the time when the fight was stopped by the referee. Then Bajero defended his super middleweight title for the 12 round decision over Brad Reed. Norfolk Ben Raba. Well, Stevie Marks stopped in the second round there. Again, Ignatius Missolidi stepping in to, to stop the fight. Marks wanted to continue, but it wasn't to be. And as you just saw our feature event, Ian McLeod successfully retains the Australian middleweight title in a 12-round war against Nick Lund. A short, abbreviated show, but what a show it's been. And this to look forward to as well. Angelo Hyder's next promotion featuring Danny Green. And the heavyweight Carly Meehan will be in action as well in separate bouts. The Central Coast Leagues Club, the venue, on Friday the 27th of September. There's the number to get the tickets. And on the same night at the Southport RSL, Jamie Meyer puts on Philip Holiday and the Australian Cruiserweight title between Jamie Wallace and Phil Gregory. So if that's in your local neighbourhood, get along and support the Australian fight scene. Also to look forward to the Super Worldweight Championship of the World, Oscar De La Hoya and Fernando Vargas. That's in your Fox Sport Hotel, the nearest outlet on Sunday from 11 a.m. Don't miss that one. There's plenty of bad blood there and it should be a fantastic fight well that just about wraps things up here from Knox in Melbourne thanks to Brad Vicali and Barry Michael we'll see them again soon we hope you can join us again as Ian McLeod retains his Australian middleweight title Sports Production.